everybody, this is Jeff B and you have reached my channel. So today what we're going to talk about is what we feed our fish. We're going to do a little informational and talk story video about fish food. The different kinds, what goes in it, and then your background philosophies on it. I had uh, done this video previously um, and with the assistance of some of my some of my friends, we decided that maybe I went a little too fifth gear on that video. So this is going to be the revised, toned down version of that video. But I want to relay a lot of the same information. I'm going to slow it down also because I'm just going to make everyone seasick. Look at these poor things melting. Oh, this is what it looks like when plants melt. Oh, sad. It's all right, big deal. So let's talk about it. Fish food. What do you buy? What do you put into your fish? Uh, there are many, many brands out there of varying levels of quality and cost uh, that you can choose from. Uh, everything from stuff that is just wildly expensive to stuff that is just so cheap you question if you could ever feed that to anything. Um, and then there's the idea of live feeding uh, as opposed to pellet feeding. And these are all really good conversations to get into if you're going to take your fish keeping seriously. Because it is my opinion, and I believe it should be yours as well, that if you're going to take the time to keep these animals and go through the expense and effort and education, etc., etc., the losses, the gains, um, having, you know, your wife look at you like you're crazy, uh, if you're going to go through all that stuff, you, you really want to make it worthwhile and go for it. So for me, you will generally not see me feeding like tetra flakes or any of these kind of things uh, to my fish. I, I stay away from the cheap stuff. Um, reason being, for me, I'm a bit of an ingredient list snob. Um, and I say that, uh, not to be junk, but it really is my belief that if you're going to spend the money, you might as well do it and do something good for yourself. I kind of believe the same about how I feed myself and my family, too. You know, I would prefer they not eat at McDonald's every single day. Matter of fact, if they eat there once a month, that's really kind of pushing it. Because there's a lot of different nutrients and things that the body requires and different combinations of nutrients to make each one more effective. There are some fish foods out there that are, I would suggest you stay away from. Now, what I cannot do is get too specific here because I don't want to pick a fight and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings and I know everyone's, there's varying levels of friendship out there in the YouTube community, and I don't want to piss anybody off. But what I do want to say is, before you try any new fish foods on the market or buy anything because uh, you are a big, big fan of an individual's channel and you trust their word and you trust what's going on by them, uh, I'm going to say don't do that. You can take your trust and put it in your pocket because trust is just a... <laughs> possibly a regret waiting to happen. Why don't you flip that jar around and read the back of that thing and let's talk about what's in it. Uh, I'm going to pull an ingredient list, say out of the air, that is maybe something you wouldn't want to feed to your fish. Let's just start. Um, I would say the difference, do you know the difference between whole fish meal and standard fish meal? Um, well, I'll get into it real quick. If you flip your fish food around and you see something that says fish meal, what you're looking at is the discarded and unedible portions of uh, different fish that have been taken, ground, mashed up, burned up, <laughs> and recrusted into something that's like pellet dust. Uh, and then, and that's all it is. There's no, not as much meat. It's basically bones and guts. Um, and then you want to talk about whole fish meal. Well, what whole fish meal is, is they take the entire fish, meat, fins, tail, butt, eyeballs, everything, throw it in, and it goes through basically the same process, wherein by they extract the fish oil, and what's left over is the granule particle that you can use for pellets. Um, the difference is foundation. If you want to build a strong foundational nutrient, you want to use as much as you can. It's just, it's basic. Uh, it's really, really basic. Certain things you'll find in bones, certain things you'll find in meat, certain things you'll find in fatty tissues, etc., etc. Uh, and not all body parts house the same nutrients. And so throwing a half of the fish away and then just using the unedible portions, say that out loud, using the unedible portions uh, to make fish food, you know, or animal feed, really. Um, there's going to be a distinction between the two, and that is using a broader range 
of nutrients to build the foundation for your fish food. Okay, so we got fish meal down. Let's look at the next thing. Um, if the jar of fish food that you are thinking about purchasing or have purchased says anything about soybean meal, specifically de-hulled soybean meal, uh, let's talk about that really. Uh, I would like you to go through as many of the fish profiles as you can tonight, do a little Google research, and find out which fish in nature eats soybeans. Let me go ahead and skip ahead. There aren't any fish in nature that eat soybeans. Soybean is not a natural prey to any fish at all, ever. They don't do it. Why are they doing it? Well, because the good people at science uh, decided that it, you know, it does have enough protein that you can transfer it out. And so they started pushing it on animal feed farms, tilapia farms, for example. Um, these tilapia that, that make your fish sticks, you got to feed them something, and they found that they could do it. Now, the, what was the powerful draw about this is that it was affordable, 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 as opposed to using fish meal or whole fish meal. Obviously, you don't have to go out and fish it and net it. You don't have to pay the insurance of the fishermen. You just <laughs> grow it, get it done. You can grow it in mass amounts, and that's just it. They say that it has no noticeable health effects on the fish, and that it'll fatten up real well. They're happy about it. It'll, it'll fatten up and grow a big old fat fish. Um, well, I want to ask you, what do you think the difference between a life study of a farm-raised fish that is going to be a fish stick and something that you spent $230 on and is going to live in your tank as long as you can keep it alive? Well, there is a nice, big distinction between the two things. And you better believe they haven't done any real studies on farm-raised food fish as to the health and quality of their life. Then I want to ask you another informational bit. Is a fat fish really what you want? You want a big, fat, fat-ass fish? No, you really don't. You probably don't. So let's move on. We got the first thing, fish meal. We got the second thing, de-hulled soybean meal. Let's talk about the third thing, and that is wheat. Wheat. Wheat is not prey. Look at that. Poop. Wheat is not prey. No fish has ever hunted down wheat. How about you, Purple? You want to get some wheat in your diet? Huh? Wheat has very little protein, and then wheat flour is often used as a binder in the same way that you would in cookies or things of that nature. Did you know that when they, when you read wheat twice on your fish food ingredient list, it's because they split it, and ultimately there's probably a lot more than they're trying to admit to. Wheat, wheat flour, Wheat rosins, wheat germ, wheat dust, wheat monkey, it's all the same thing. So if they've listed wheat a couple different times, what that's called is ingredient splitting. And they're doing it so that you don't see exactly how much of that they put in there. Basically, you're feeding your fish cookies. Soybean cookies with fish flavor in it, huh? And then the rest, maybe you'll see some vitamins in there. But what I want to ask you... Sorry about that, I, I ran out of space. Uh, but that does give me this opportunity to, to say, uh, Psychedelic, babe! <laughs> the juice. Do you see vitamin B in there anywhere? Well, let me tell you why you would want to see vitamin B. Vitamin A, great. C, great. D, wonderful. E, great letter. Vitamin B and the different variations of vitamin B, B12, B, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, are excellent in assisting the digestive system in breaking down proteins. Vitamin B helps you digest proteins. Does the same for your fish. Their digestive systems are different, but not wholly. So let's break that down a little bit. Vitamin B in your food assists to break down the proteins that you have in it. If you don't have any vitamin B in your food, is it a loss? No, but if that's all you're feeding, that means you do have to supplement because your fish should probably be vitamin B deficient. And then, Quite frankly, if the first two things were crap proteins anyway, like fish meal as opposed to whole fish meal, and then <laughs> soybean meal, those are crap substitutions for protein anyway. So then you have crap proteins and then 
not the right nutrient backup to assist the body in enhancing and even trying to break down those two crap proteins. Are you following me? So what I need you to do is take a little bit more time with your purchases, with your fish food. I want you to take a little time and read the back ingredient list. Check out those nutrients. Google what each one does. Don't just sit there and look at that big crazy scientific word and act like you know what that thing really does to a body. Type it in. See what it really does. And then you'll know. I mean, you'll just know. Do a positives and negatives list. Put one fish food on the other and one fish on one side. Fish food on one side. And then write down those ingredient lists. Make yourself a little note list and see what each one does. And you compare the lists. And this is your money you're feeding these things. Just because your fish will eat it doesn't mean it's nutritionally sound for them. I mean, I can walk around my house and throw all kinds of shit in my fish tank and my dumb fish will probably eat it. Doesn't mean it was a good idea. You know what I'm saying? Can you hear me? Like, I got flour tortillas right now. I'm dying. I'm going to grind one of these flour tortillas like I hate it. I'm just going to eat it with my face like a lion. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I threw some flour tortilla in here, I got a dollar says at least half of these fish would go at it the same way I plan on going at it in about five minutes. Now, are flour tortillas marketed and sold as good fish food? No! Because it's not good fish food. <sighs> I got lots of other thoughts on this, but I'm not going to share them. Because, because I want to, I want to be like my professional friends on here who just are sweet and awesome, despite what they're harboring the darkness. Anyway, this is Jeff B. I'm getting weird, stoked. After work tomorrow's my Friday. Chee Read the back of your damn fish food.